Okay, I'm going to tie a fly called a Juju Sally, and uh, this is an imitation of a Yellow Sally Nymph, um, and this is the non-beaded version. Um, I've got a two-bit Sally also um, that has got two tungsten beads in it, but I'll show you the uh, um, the original first version, and this fly was tied to imitate those small Yellow Sally Nymphs. Um, that uh, we see so often during the summer months. And what I've got here in the vise is a hook that you really can't get anymore. It's a JB01. Um, a Daiichi 1150 is very similar. Um, you can see it's an up eye curve shank hook. Um, there's several hooks that, that will work in place of this, but I've still got some of the old JB01s left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this one. Um, and this one's about a size 14. And I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit in my vise because I'm gonna try to take advantage of some of that curve. So I'm gonna start tying this fly with some some yellow a dot unit thread, nothing fancy here, just yellow. And I'm going to start this thread, oh, two thirds of the way up the hook. Trim my tag end out. I'm going to make a nice even thread base down about halfway down the bend of the hook. And once I get there, I'm going to tie in for the tails uh, a few strands from a Wooster paintbrush. Um, now these are very similar to micro fibbits, but uh, micro fibbits are much thinner and I wanted a coarser fiber to make the tail on this fly. Um, so I went to the hardware store and I found this is just a little short trim brush. Um, I don't know, it was eight or ten bucks and uh, you know, it's got enough tails for a few flies. Um, so it seemed like a pretty good deal. Um, but that's, that's what the tail on this fly is. And I'm going to clip two of these fibers out. And I almost always succeed in getting more than two. Yep, I sure did. And you'll notice that not all those bristles are the same diameter, so you want to try to find two that are that are fairly close. And I'm going to take these and measure them against the hook shank, so they're about equal to the shank length. And I'm going to tie these in back here at the bend of the hook. And I want them to be right up on top. And I'll put four or five turns, just one in front of the other, in front of there. Um, so this is going to be exactly like tying a split tail on a mayfly dry. Um, and what I'll do to split these tails further is I'll drag my thread back behind the near tail and come up between them and at a steep angle make another turn around the hook. And then I'll continue that figure eight over the far tail. And when I tug on that thread I should get some nice widely split split tails like so. Now, of course, you can just drag the tag into the thread up between those two. Um, and truth be told, those are fairly uh, coarse, stiff fibers. So you can even just manually adjust those um, so that you've got a nice wide spread on that tail. Um, I'm going to continue my thread forward over the butt ends of that tail. Back up to about the two thirds point. And I want to try to keep that underbody nice and even. And I'll trim those out. Now I'll set my hook back in the vise just sort of conventionally. Uh, see if you can get a little better look. There you go. Now you can see his tails. Um, now one thing that you can do um, if you are real picky is you could take a, a brown marker and just sort of fleck those tails up a bit. Give them a bit of modeling. And that is good for 13 to 16 percent more fish on any given day if you do that. Um, you know, some some days I need it, some days I don't. Um, you know, and if I'm catching too many, I can just wipe that off. So what I'll do now for the body is I'm gonna take some yellow chartreuse super hair, and what I want are three strands of the yellow chartreuse. And I'll get these sort of aligned and set aside here. And then I'm going to take one strand of red. And I'll cut all four strands so that they're even. And it really doesn't matter where that red one lines up. It'll only show um, uh, on the first turn as far as the order goes from there. They'll all line up. But I'm going to tie these in along my near side of the hook and wrap back over them to the bend. Trying to keep as smooth and even a thread base as I can manage. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Now I'm going to come forward again. And I'm going to build a bit of a taper here. Now we're on a 14, so um, yellow sallies are, are a pretty skinny bud, but we do want to build a bit of a taper here. So I'm just going to work the thread back and forth on that front end to fatten that up just a bit. So I've just got smooth transitions. And this is one thing if you've tied anything in the Juju series with the super hair, um, you want the body underbody to be as smooth as you can as you can manage. Um, so about like so. Now I'm going to take all four strands. I'm going to bring them around the hook. I'm going to come in front of the hook point and sort of rock those fibers to get them lined up. And then I'll start to make my turns. And you can see as I come around, when I reach the hook point, I'm going to come in front of the hook point and back again to line these up so that they lie flat as I wrap. And I don't want any overlap here. Just nice smooth turns. Right up to the end of the underbody. And once I get there, I'll tie all four strands off with several tight turns of thread. And then I can trim those out. So we've got a nice little segmented body there on uh, that little highlight of red. <coughs> I'm now going to double my thread back up onto the front edge of the abdomen to just in front of the hook point. And when I get here, I'm going to take some yellow fluorofiber. Um, and I want about a dozen fibers. And I want them to be a few inches long. Uh, we need a, a reasonable length to work with here because we're going to make this into both sets of legs. Um, so I do want to, to count the fibers. One, two. So there's... I'm on a 14, so I'm going to go with 14 fibers. I think that's what I've got there. Like so. And you can see, obviously, you would, you would increase that number or decrease that number based on the size of the fly. Um, the point being is that you don't want a, a thousand of them. You want a fairly sparse little bundle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these in away from the end. I want to leave a long tag end up here at the front end. Um, when I tie these in, I want to anchor them in right on top, just in front of that hook point. And I'll wrap down to just off the front edge of the abdomen there. And once I get to that point, I'm going to start to build the thorax. So I'm just going to build the thorax up with the thread. And I'll run back and forth. And you can see I've still got some working room in front there. Run back and forth to fatten this thorax up a bit. And one thing I do notice about yellow sallies is their thorax is not um, a whole lot thicker than their abdomen. So we don't want to fatten that up too much. Now I'm going to divide these fibers evenly. And we had, we thought we had 14, so we're going to put seven on a side. I'm going to pull half back on my far side and wrap back over it about a third of the way up the thorax. And I'll pull the other half back on the near side and wrap it to the same point. Get a couple turns here so you can see that those fibers are sticking out the sides. So now I'm going to build the second piece of the thorax. We're building a few more legs into this fly uh, than we would on a, on a jujubatus. Stoneflies have got more prominent legs. So I'm going to start to build this thorax up a bit here just to match that back end. And I'll bring my thread just up behind the eye here. And then I'll bring my wing case up between the two and tie that down. Then I'll take the remaining fibers and I'll divide these again into equal numbers on both sides. And I'll tie one half back on my near side and one half back on my far side. I said that backwards, but you got the idea. Um, half on each side is what we're looking for. 
So we've got those legs spread out like so. Now I'll come in and I'm going to build a thread head and a whip finish just to smooth everything off there. Trim my thread out. Now I like to leave the legs long for the moment um, and hopefully these won't be too much in the way while I try to show what I'm going to do with the resin. Um, I'm going to put a little coat of UV resin over the top. I'm going to use some solar as medium. And I like to leave those legs long because they just make it, it just makes it easier for me to hold them out of the way while I do what I need to do here with the resin. So I'll sweep those legs down. And I'm going to put this coat of resin from the thread head up over the top of the wing case. And you can see I kind of bounce the needle to coat the top of the body with a nice smooth coat of resin. We'll smooth this out and sort of build our taper and winding back down to the to the hook eye. I want to make sure I'm even on both sides. You can just use the very tip of the needle to do that. And when I'm happy with where that sits, I'll come in and if you watch the legs, they'll probably move a little bit. I'm going to hit this with my UV lamp from fairly far away and I'll shine the light on and off onto the resin and off to let it cure all the way through slowly so that it adheres very tightly to the top of the fly and won't come off later when we're fishing it. Like so. So now I'll come in to trim my legs and I usually like to trim one side then the other. I'll try to hold these where you can see them here. Um, well, I can't hold that side where you can see it, but what I'll do is I'm going to hold these back at an angle and trim these legs off, and then I'll do that on this side, and I think that'll be a little easier for you to see. You can see I'll hold these back at an angle and trim straight so that my front legs are just slightly shorter than the rear legs, so we've got that nice widespread leggy look to this fly. We can kind of come in and reposition our tails. I think I manhandled them a little bit when I pulled those legs down. And that is our, our Juju Sally. Really pretty little fly, um, you know, which always builds, builds confidence. Um, but a good imitation of that small yellow stone. You know, during the summer months, there uh, um, are, you know, in certain places, there are definite hatches of this bug. And this bug crawls out of the water to, to hatch, uh, or I'm sorry, does not crawl out of the water to hatch like a stonefly. It usually hatches in the water, so um, you can actually get yellow sally emergences. Um, but this is a fly that I fish with, with good success on the Colorado, um, uh, the Green Below Fontenelle, and uh, the South Fork of the Snake as well. Um, so so any it, all of our waters have got some, some degree of yellow sally. So this is a fly that you can kind of fish, um, particularly during the summer. They, they are active in, in the drift, and um, being such a bright colored fly, it's something that sticks out. And there's not a lot of good imitations of this little bug. Um, you know, this fly is only, oh, half inch long, maybe. Um, so very small little stone. But a great little change-up pattern to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to jag these legs up just a bit so they're not quite so so even. I don't like things that are too even there. But that is our Juju Sally. That was kind of a fun one. Twist up a few of those, put them in your box, see if I didn't turn out to be, to be right. I bet I am. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. We'll catch you next time around.